Hi again everybody and welcome back to another video here on my YouTube channel for Tim's Tech Corner. Today we are going to take a look at a roll, uh, rooted, I almost combined the two, a rotor rooter a rooted Polaroid tablet 8 inch form factor otherwise known as the P-Tab 8000. Honestly they could have just called this thing the P-Tab 8, maybe the P-Tab 800 topped. Calling it a P-Tab 8000 is like, ooh, fancy, but the tablet really isn't. Uh, before we get into much more into this video, I'll tell you right away what this tablet is not. This tablet is not a powerhouse tablet. This tablet is not really a tablet for, let's say, tablet aficionados or anybody who wants the latest and greatest. That's definitely what this thing is not. It's probably not going to be your gaming tablet and uh, it mm, could be maybe a video tablet but um, it also does not have a super high resolution. The resolution kind of reminds me of almost a honeycomb level but it is running ice cream sandwich. So that being said let's go ahead and, and jump in on it. Um, I'll show you the physical items here on the tablet. On the front you have the iPad -E HP type button over here and there's no need to show you the top or left right side because in a strange design everything is here on the bottom. Yes, the bottom. We have the headphone jack, we have a micro SD slot, we have mini USB, mic volume down, volume up, power, and power port over here. Everything is on the bottom, so that means if you have the tablet sitting like this, you have no access to anything. If you have headphones or speakers hooked up to this thing, it's all, you, you can't do it because it's, it's sitting like this. And with the button being over here, it seems to imply that you may have it oriented like this. The only thing I wanted else that I want to go ahead and point out, see that over there, that metal? That is the one lone speaker on this device. Imagine that, a mono speaker. That should kind of tell you where this tablet is in terms of oomph and kick. So let's go ahead and jump into some of the software and UI components. You're looking at the Polaroid launcher over here. You might think, hey, that actually looks kind of neat, and it probably is, except for the fact this, this is a giant widget. If you like settings and power but don't care about online help, you can't remove it. This is one giant preformed widget as is this one with Facebook gallery camera, which is a front facing camera by the way, it's up here, no rear. And this is another widget. So ha, there you go, it's one gigantic chunk. Now this tablet really is in severe need of a root and it is rooted and I suggest you do it. It's very simple and here's why you need to root it. I'll just show you the root checker over here, proving that it is rooted. You can see it's running without the prompt for super user access, which means it's already asked for it and it's been granted, and there you go. Congratulations, the device has root access. Why you want to root this device is a little bit different than others. On some others, like an e-reader, you want to root it so you get the full Android experience. This one actually has the full Android experience on it. It's ice cream sandwich. And, you know, despite this little Polaroid UI, you don't have to suffer through it. You can just delete the widget and do whatever you want. Why you want to root this tablet is to get the Google Framework installed, the Google Play Store, basically. When you first get this device, it has access to several app stores, but it's things like GetJar, and Amazon and uh, a few others and of course they're all you know they're, they're all Bob's Burger Shack compared to the juggernaut that is McDonald's or something I mean they're good 
they're okay, but they're not as fully featured. And to me, any like I have a sour taste when it comes to Get Jar. I, I know it comes in blue stacks, and I kind of don't mind it there. I think it's pretty cool in blue stacks, but I, like I get this mental block when it comes to Get Jar because of all the Go launcher stuff, and it's all like, hey, this theme is free. If you also install Getjar and go through some hoops over there and install some piece of crap through Getjar and then this theme will be free. Like, I hate that. I just, I despise it so much. Just be like, give it to me for free or like charge me 99 cents, 5 bucks, whatever. Don't make me be like a train seal on a circus and have to do a whole bunch of crap on Getjar to get a theme or something. But... So when you get that download apps thing over here, you'll see that it will come up and basically you have access to Amazon, the One Mobile Market, Opera's One, SlideMe, GetChar, and MobyHand. Now with the browser up, there's one thing that I want to point out. Maybe it's mine, maybe it's all P-tabs, but, oh, it's actually working. Well, somewhat. This upper area of the tablet, while it's in this orientation, for some reason, is just, it's not sensitive. I mean, look at that. C can you hear the, can you hear it? Like, I'm hitting up here, and it, it, it barely tapped anything. So, maybe it's my particular one, maybe it's just all the PTAB 8000s in general. I don't really know. So now that you've seen some of the UI on it, and I'll show you the all apps over here. So you've got your ice cream sandwich experience, um, typical app drawer over here. You can go ahead and throw a launcher on here and, you know, change it up a little bit. One thing, and it might have been the previous owner, this little app called Cosmic Experience apparently wants to close. That's weird. It's worked before. Okay, there we go. I kind of like this. No, I don't want any more free app shop. This Cosmic Experience app. I like this thing a lot. I love to just have this plugged in somewhere and just watch this. I think this is kind of cool. But anyway, so who is this tablet for? Since we've discussed the negatives of it, you know, who is this tablet going to be for? Well, I'll bring up the Antutu benchmark over here and I'll show you where it, it tested at. You can see it tested at 32.96. That, that's low. If we come, yeah, we're not going to be able to get over the ranking, so we'll just do chart over here. Ah, oh, see, and I'm going to want to bar. Can't get to the bar chart. There we go. It ranks all the way down here. Womp. Low. This tablet. Like I said, it's not for the gamer, it's probably not for the heavy video guy, maybe. This is for, I'd say, two different extremes. Maybe somebody who is, is considerably older, doesn't have a tablet, um, you want to get them a tablet as a gift for some reason, like maybe you uh, want them to have Skype so you can say hi every now and then or something like that. Um, it might be good for that. It might also be good for somebody in the late single digits in age, maybe early double digits, 8, 9, maybe up to 12 or 13. Um, it, it, it's, it's okay, because I mean, it's got the full Android experience, and once you root it, of course, you open the doors quite a bit for, uh, you know, the value and everything. But it's, it's probably good as maybe a e-reader tablet, uh, a social media tablet, something that you can quickly check Cheddar, uh, <laughs> Twitter or Facebook, um, you know, things like that. And uh, it, it, it stands up for that. It's, it actually handles the live wallpaper that I have on there pretty well without noticeable lag. And uh, this little cosmic app over here, it seems slow, but that's actually because how this one should be. There isn't really any stutter. If you look at the particles coming by, they're coming by smooth, and there's no stutter to it, which is actually kind of nice. But, I mean, it's a very light tablet. 
It's made out of complete plastic. It doesn't feel like the front would crack very easy because it's more plasticky than a brittle glass. The back does not have a rubber grip. It has pure plastic in the back. Um, it's very light. You're not going to feel it in a book bag or anything like that. And it's, it's probably good. It might not be the best actually for e-reading because I think the resolution is a little blurry. It sort of feels like a honeycomb level. Um, there may be ways to fix the sharpness on it, but it, it's not super bad. I mean, it's not blurry. You're not going to go blind reading this thing, but um, it, it should serve a purpose maybe as a kitchen tablet. You know, one that you're like watching a YouTube video on while you're trying to cook a food that you're, you know, seeing a video on or reading a recipe on a website or something. It, it's pretty solid for that. And of course, you know, it's not an e-reader, so it's a full-blown tablet experience. Um, for a beginner tablet user, the button on here is, of course, brings it right to the default home screen. So if you have somebody who's panicking and lost deep in an app or something and they don't know what to do and they've like maybe lost the notification bar, they can just hit the button and get out. Uh, another good point about this tablet is the fact that when you cut the screen off, it actually goes into a deep sleep, which is good and bad. It, it's bad because it cuts off the Wi-Fi, so... If you're a real tablet aficionado and you like your things to always stay up to date and update any time, things are, this isn't for you. If you're maybe a forgetful person who like reads a book on here and then just leaves it on a table and forgets to bring it to a charger or something, this is the tablet for you because it lost 1% charge overnight. So we're talking anywhere from 8 to 10 hours went by before I had touched the device, wasn't on the charger, it went from 88 to 87 percent overnight. The Wi-Fi was off, but it's still pretty nice to see that battery life. With it on, a little bit of a quicker drain. Um, you're going to maybe go through in 30 minutes, maybe 3 or 4 percent. So. Uh, I would definitely recommend rooting it. I will put a link up to the tool in the description. It's very, very easy to root. You just need uh, to make sure ADB is running on your machine. ADB is a, um, is a command line interpreter that will allow the PC to send commands to the Android device. The tool uses ADB to connect to it. It uses the uh, Restore Exploit to inject BusyBox and SuperUser on there. Uh, after that, if you choose the options in the installer, or the, the all-in-one tool, it will also get you the Play Store and the Google Services Framework, which is highly recommended because obviously the Play Store is the big daddy when it comes to it. I mean, the Amazon one is no slouch, and Amazon will actually email it to you if you need it, like if you can't get it directly, they can email it, and you can bring up email on the tablet and install it that way. But I prefer having the Google Play Store on just about anything. To me, it's intimately tied to the Android experience. So there you go, there's a PTAB 8000. You'll see a link in the description to a thread on how to root this device, and I highly recommend doing it. The utility may say that the root failed. However, if SuperSue is running and you install anything that needs root access and SuperSue comes up and prompts you, you know you're working. I would recommend the root checker on the Google Play Store because that will tell you 100% if you're rooted or not. Um, and if you just root the device and don't install the Play Store, uh, you can probably check to see if you're rooted by rebooting the device and running SuperSue and that'll let you know. So, hope you enjoyed this video on a P-Tab 8000 from Polaroid. They also make a 7-inch and a 10-inch. I don't think processing is any better or worse on the other ones, although I've heard some people say the resolution on the 10-inch is a bit better. I would definitely not get an 8-inch for more than 100, and I'd probably not get the 10-inch for more than 125 or so. So, take care everybody, and have a good one.